Hello lovely people, welcome to my channel, it's Hila here, Saturday Night Stitch and today's video I'm just going to be continuing with part 2 of becoming Victorians. So basically, um, as mentioned in part 1, my children had a Victorian day wherein they were learning about the Victorian era and it all started when I promised them I'd make them some Victorian costumes and I used a fantastic simplicity pattern and again all the details of that particular one are in part 1. I didn't actually have enough time to make myself a Victorian costume as I only had uh, four days between finding out that I was volunteering uh, for the trip and finding out that even as the volunteers we also had to dress up as Victorians. So I did what any person would do. I went onto Amazon and I found a really wonderful looking two short taffeta type fabric um, costume which I bought because that was the only color that was actually available for delivery um, within a day or two. And when it came to the hat, I decided that I was going to make my own hat. I watched a few tutorials on how to make a Victorian bonnet. And so I used this old um, hat that used to belong to one of my daughters, but the brim had just become too small. Uh, for her so it was uh, perfect to use for this project so I started off by cutting a wedge out um, at the back of the hat and then because I felt that the crown was too high for a Victorian bonnet uh, hat I decided to lower the crown basically by cutting out off the top bit of the crown and then sort of sewing it back on at the bottom so I think that the type of fabric, no, it's not a fabric, is it? Um, honestly, I have no idea what this hat is made out of. It's some sort of a synthetic straw, as best as I can tell. But it was easy enough for a needle to uh, sew through it. So I just basically reattached um, the crown to the, sorry, the brim of the hat to, to the crown. But it made it just um, a little bit less sticky outy. If, if that makes sense. I just want to say I had so much fun doing this because for this particular one I didn't really have a tutorial that I was following along. I just got in an idea and I'd seen how other people had done and my thing was that I was just trying to cover this old uh, hat up with this black uh, polyester fabric that had been sitting in my stash for a while. So in the absence of a hat block, I used a good old fashioned saucepan that seemed to be doing the job well and loads of pins. And I just basically pinned the fabric over. It felt a little bit like draping. I have done a little bit of draping in my dressmaking. And so I felt <laughs> a little bit like I was doing some draping. It was, it was fun. Uh, so the next stage was then I sort of uh, sewed it down after I'd pinned it and yeah this bit went quite slow and it probably would go a lot easier if you have a hat brim, I uh, know a hat block that you can put it on but I didn't so there were a lot of ouchies uh, when I was uh, doing this particular one and I was trying to keep it as smooth and as flat as possible and I really was short for time uh, with this because I only had a few hours to work on this before I needed it to be uh, ready. So once I'd covered that, I then cut off the rest of uh, the fabric. At this point, I really had no idea how I was going to proceed um, beyond that. So I decided to turn over and start working on the front facing bit of the bonnet itself. And I wanted to do a pleated uh, look. So some of the images that I had seen, the bonnets had some pleating on the front. And I thought that that was really quite pre pretty. So I basically took my black polyester and I used the shiny side um, for this one. So for the other side, I didn't use the shiny side. So for this one, I was then just pleating along using the selvage edge uh, to anchor against the inner brim of the hat. And I just kept going around. And unfortunately, I did run out of fabric because the length of this uh, fabric was only two meters and the pleats that I was doing were um, rather quite deep. By the, but by the time that I ran out of uh, selvage edge, I'd done all the pleating and clipping I could not be asked to start again to take it all out and then do pleats that are not quite as deep. So I sort of MacGyvered something at the end where 
the salvage <laughs> edge had run out because I realized that hey, nobody is really going to be seeing me wearing this uh, for long enough to actually notice that there's any uh, problems because it's you know it's 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 a costume uh, thing. Um, so at this point, I then decided that I was going to cut out cut off the rest of the fabric. Uh, because I was going to have to sew down those plits in some way. Uh, and there you can see there how I tried to fix the issue of the fabric that had run out by uh, adding on another piece like that, which is completely on a different grain to the other plates, but nobody is going to notice that, um, particularly when you're dressed as a Victorian walking down the street with about 30 other school kids who are also dressed as Victorians and you're all walking single file. It's not the sort of thing that uh, anybody would pick up on. And I feel like sometimes that's the thing that I struggle with as a seamstress. Sometimes I do get bogged down and focus on the tiny details that probably in the grand scheme of things don't really matter and it's like it's better sewn than perfect really. So once that was done I had to get my needle out and I started sewing down the pleats. Now initially I was trying I had planned on uh, sewing down each pleat along the length of the pleat but time was not on my side and as you can see by the apron that I was also having to do dinner uh, for the kids and so this was literally me doing this in between making um, some mac and cheese and salads for dinner time and each time I got a break I was um, coming in not quite a break but each time something was happening like the macaroni was boiling or something like that I would quickly come on over um, and uh, and do this and that was until my husband finished work and then he came and uh, he took over the rest of the cooking so that I could uh, carry on with it as fast as I could. By this point I was realizing that despite my desire to do everything hand sewn I was gonna have to bring out the hot glue gun at some point and I was just trying to get it get it all done as fast as I uh, could do. So at this point now I'm sewing down the brim side, the outer brim um, of the hat so that those pleats could uh, stay in, in place. So I had to make sure that they were tensioned enough to not unfold because I didn't have time to sew them down individually as I had planned. And by this point it was beginning to look a little bit like a Victorian hat and I was getting a little bit proud of myself. And so the next thing was to use some of this uh, ribbon that has been sitting in my collection for nearly eight years now and this is the first time that it's getting used so uh, yay for being a little bit of a hoarder I guess. Um, so that was going to tie um, everything down and then I just sort of, uh, I don't know what the technical term for this is but I just think it's sort of like a, a MacGyvering of stuff just to get it to go round. Um, I could have tried to take dimensions off of this hat and then sewn, you know, cut out a circle, sewn a crown and then sort of um, put the fabric cap over the straw hat itself. But because we were doing a lot of renovations at this time and a lot of things had gone um, wrong, a lot of things had been piled up in my sewing room so I didn't really have access <laughs> to uh, most of my sewing stuff to be able to easily do that and I couldn't use the dining table because it was nearly dinner time so I'm using the breakfast bar for this but it was a lot of fun I think as a seamstress having opportunities to be resourceful um, you know I, I think you get more pride in a in a project when you've had to be a bit more uh, resourceful so there I am trimming off the rest of um, the none required fabrics after making sure that I'm not going to regret cutting that um, off. We went on now to back to the, I don't know what that part is called, but the bit where the brim and the crown of the hat joined together. So I had um, an old piece of grow grain ribbon, a black piece of grow grain ribbon, which I just used. And again, um, it was 
getting on i was running out of time so the the glue gun uh, came out uh, something that i'm not really too keen on using because i've burnt myself a couple of times on it so but needs must when you haven't planned your time properly and you you need to make something um, ready <laughs> in time and to be fair the glue gun did help me get this done i would not have been able to finish this without the use of the glue gun um, and the benefits of the hot glue gun actually unlike using fabric glue is there isn't the downtime of waiting for the glue itself to dry by the time it cools down it's already dried on so yeah i'm just gonna show some love and appreciation for the glue gun here the only downside for it was because i was working with a black um, satin polyester fabric uh, those little glue strings when it dried it you could see um, the whiteness of the glue gunk the whiteness of the glue stuff which happened a couple of times where I just had to wipe you know wipe it off and it it, it, it had that um, sheeny stuff going on but again I was just like better sewn than perfect but it got me there um, faster than I would have otherwise uh, and so cutting off um, the bits at the edge there and then just finishing off um, that edge where I was in I'm gonna go and sew um, the ribbons because the ribbons they come uh, off of that brim so again that was uh, super quick to finish up I would have continued on with the glue gun except for I ran out of the glue stick which really really sucked because then I had to go back to using a needle <laughs> but it ran out at the point where i was sewing down these flowers so i basically went on a bit of a hunt when i realized that oh my gosh i don't actually have any trims to put on the hat and i need to find some trims so i was looking through the kids toy box through the dresser box and then i remembered i went through a phase where i really loved these floral headbands i think it was about three springs ago and I still have them. And so I went to find them to dig them out of the attic. And these purple ones I thought were the ones that went best with the black look. So I just took the headband as is and I just glued it down so that it wouldn't slip um, off because the satin fabric that I've used is, is really quite slippery. So this is the point at which I ran out of the the glue, the glue sticky thingy magic. And I didn't have um, any more left so that was it and thankfully four of the five flowers had been glued down and there you can see I'm trying to use my fingers to which you shouldn't try to do by the way but I was trying to use my fingers to push whatever little bits I left um, and if you look carefully you can see some of the white bits and bobs of the um, glue itself but never mind we're going to cover that over with some black lace trim which again has been sitting in my collection for several years. And so I just decided to start at the back then. I had to use the uh, needle and thread and I just sipped through it, uh, sewing it down. And that did a really good job actually of covering over the messiness of the glue gun stuff um, that I had used. By this point, it was getting quite exciting because it was beginning to really look like some sort of a Victorian uh, bonnet hat. And it's quite fascinating to think that you could create something like this just from using um, bits and bobs of uh, this, that and the other and using an old hat as the base. So I'm really grateful to all of the historical sewing um, channels that were there that just gave me the inspiration to really try and go for this and, and not just be like, oh, well, it's not something that I can do. So I then got uh, bits of uh, fabric that I was going to uh, sew into ribbons. And for those ones, I did go upstairs and just quickly managed to whiz them through uh, the sewing machine. And then I sewed them down to the base of the bonnet itself uh, by this point it was time for bedtime for me and i didn't have time to finish the inner bit 
of the hat so I just left it like that because nobody was going to see that anyway once it was worn so that was how I ended up making a Victorian hat and I had so much fun doing this and I cannot believe that this started off as an old sun faded um, straw hat and it came out looking so beautifully so the next day I got dressed in this um, really strange thing that I got from Amazon and it's like a really it's made out of this uh, too short tough style polyester fabric and it came with the underskirt I'm wearing a corset over all of my thermals because there's no way I was going to be cold we we're having to walk to the place where the Victorian workshop was I didn't have a blouse with a high neckline so I just took some white fabric in a rectangle and wrapped it around my neck and I put one of my favorite uh, brush pins on there in an attempt to create from afar the look of a Victorian lady and my hair I did try as best as possible to do a Victorian style hairstyle um, and that's basically sort of like having a center parting and this wide swept really well kept center parting and there I was ready to go and spend the day as a Victorian. I had a lovely day with my girls. We had Victorian names and my Victorian name was Gertrude. My girls were Lily and Alice and we just had so much fun. Thank you so much if you've watched until the end. I really hope that you found the video entertaining, useful <laughs> and informative. And if you did, do give the video a big thumbs up. And until I see you next time, lovelies, happy sewing. Bye.